I previously built a miniature 90s PC from an old firewall here on the channel. And those videos received quite a number of comments, so thank you for that everyone. In this video I'll follow up on some of the suggestions in those comments and try to install Windows 2000 and I'll also give Linux a go. And finally I'll see if I have any more luck with getting networking and 3D acceleration working in Windows 98. And also, benchmarks. So it turns out that using double-sided tape isn't the most serviceable solution for attaching a computer case cover. But hey, it works, and it's not like I take this thing apart every other day. The reason I am taking it apart is that there's no CD-ROM drive in this thing, and neither do I have an external USB CD-ROM drive at my disposal. So how do you install Windows 2000 without a CD-ROM drive? Well, here's how I went about it. I used an application called UTM, which is basically a GUI wrapper for QMU. Kimu, QMU, Kumu? How, how the hell do you pronounce this thing? Well, anyway, in UTM, I set up a i386 machine with a disk slightly smaller than my CF card. I then installed Windows 2000 on the emulated machine and once it was ready I wrote the disk image from the emulated machine to the CF card using an utility called QMUIMG. Once the transfer was complete I took out the card and put it back in the mini PC. What happens next is unfortunately a bit anticlimactic. I couldn't get Windows 2000 nor Windows XP to run on this machine at all. Windows 2000 would just freeze up during boot and Windows XP would just crash and cause reboot. Not sure what's up with that. Maybe it's due to my unorthodox installation method or maybe this motherboard simply isn't compatible with those Windows versions. In any case, I gave up on trying to get that to work and moved on to Linux instead. I tried a few different distros claiming to be optimized for older hardware, but I could only find one that worked with hardware this old. TinyCore Linux. TinyCore was able to boot from a USB stick and install just fine on this machine. And would you look at that, all the network interfaces are recognized out of the box. Trying to do anything useful was another story though. I first tried installing Firefox, but it wouldn't even start, throwing an instant illegal instruction error. Then I was foolish enough to try Chromium instead. Chromium tried to start. It tried really hard. But running Chromium with only 112 megabytes of RAM is like trying to fit an elephant in a suitcase. It just won't fit no matter how hard you try. So then I did some googling and eventually found a browser called NetSurf, which is optimized to use very little RAM and to run on old hardware. So I tried installing NetSurf and voila, I was now browsing the web on an ancient firewall. That's not to say it was smooth though, it wasn't. I guess TinyCore either lacks to the hardware acceleration by default, or it just couldn't do it on the Twister T GPU in this machine. When I was done playing around with Linux, I wanted to go back to Windows 98 and try a few things out. Someone mentioned DirectX versions in the comments, so I figured I should try and install a later version of DirectX, just to see what would happen. So I did. And what do you know, now 3D acceleration works. Even OpenGL works now for some mysterious reason that only the Windows driver gremlins know about. And not only that, I also messed around a bit more with the Ethernet drivers, removing the devices and installing them again in various combinations. And hey presto, eventually I got the network interfaces to work too. Drivers in Win9x confuses the hell out of me sometimes, but I'm glad it works now. With 3D acceleration and networking, this little retro PC is suddenly a lot more viable than it was before. Now I can run daemon tools and mount CD and DVD images over the network to overcome the lack of an optical drive. And transferring files in general gets a whole lot easier. 
I tried making an ISO of Half-Life and installing it from a network drive. That worked great and Half-Life actually ran a lot better than I had expected, although it struggles with the frame rate at some points in the game. Speaking of performance, another thing that some of you were curious about were benchmarks. So I'm gonna run a few of those and see what we get. And as you can see, the performance of this 400MHz via C3 CPU isn't stellar. According to Seasoft Sandra, it's about on par with a Pentium 266MMX for integer operations and not even half as fast for floating point. Though I suspect the dismal floating point performance is at least partially compensated for by the inclusion of 3D now. I ran the same benchmark on my 300MHz Pentium 2 IBM Aptiva for comparison. And of course, I was also curious to see what results 3D Mark would yield. I also ran it on the Aptiva for comparison. It's got a Voodoo 2 with 12 megabytes, and I was actually a bit surprised by the result here. As you can see, the Aptiva is a little bit faster, but take a look at the CPU score. The mini PC is actually faster on the CPU score, even though the CPU is a lot slower in that machine. Then I also ran 3D Mark 2000. And as you can see, the mini PC was a little bit faster this time. I guess the Twister T is just a little bit better for DirectX 7 acceleration. So yeah, those were some interesting results. And the 3D performance should overall be quite adequate for early 3D titles. I actually don't mind lower frame rates here and there. Maybe I'm just a masochist, but for me it kinda adds to the nostalgia a little bit. And with that, it's time to wrap up this little follow-up update on the Retro Gaming Firewall Miniature PC Tower. I do have a few upgrades and additions in mind for this machine in the future, so this is most likely not the last you'll see of it here on the channel. So stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching! Take care and see you next time.